Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And now, live from the Kodak Theater, it's the Sports 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 Podcast. That's right, folks. Kodak Theater was available this week, so we went ahead and rented it out. That's where we're recording. Seems like a really busy week for the Kodak <laughs> Theater. That is not the Kodak Theater anymore. No, it's the Dolby Theater. Dolby oh. Kodak is bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, there is Whoops. no Kodak Theater I didn't watch the beginning of the telecast this year. So. I believe it. It <laughs> <laughs> makes perfect sense. All right. Anyway, let's not let's not dilly dally. I gotta hurry up. Uh, I left a pie cooling on my windowsill, and uh, and I saw a couple of kids skateboarding outside. I didn't like the looks of them, so I'm hoping we can we can dash through this. And uh, well, then we probably should home. do such a wildly long <laughs> intro then, because this has been wildly long. Tech Mobile just- update, watch update, update, watch update. Brought to you by Febreze. Feel the taste on your tongue. Right? That's, it's very odd. I, I don't feel the smell in your mouth was last week, right? Yeah. I am, I am the taste taste on tongue. worried about our sponsors in house advertising people. It's a little I weird. I don't huh? think they're doing a good job. It's a little no. weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. So, Phil, you've been playing Tech Mobile? You're goddamn right, I have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I just finished week five. It was me, the 49ers versus the Raiders. Yeah. And, how'd it go? Uh, Bo Jackson is a force. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is a fast runner. Unless he breaks his hip, he's almost unstoppable. Right, but he didn't do that during this game. <laughs> okay. Did not break his hip. No. He stayed healthy. Uh, I still won. Pulled it out. I think it was like 32 to something. 32 to 14 or something like that. Wow. They put up 14 points? Yeah. They Well, Bo Jackson, once he breaks away, there's no catch in the guy. Yep. Uh, no, yeah. Of course there's not. Uh, yeah. So what's that What's that make you on the year? 49ers, five uh, games in, yeah, are? I've, I've won every game. I'm five and five, oh. Five and oh. Five Still the and leading oh. passer. I've got the two leading receivers in the league. I'm leading in sacks with about 50. <laughs> So, pretty good year for the 49ers. In five games. Joe that Montana, is, wow. Jerry Rice. Who are you Goodyear. looking at next week? Uh, I don't know. It's a trick question. You don't look ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't Focus look ahead. Focus on every game every week. Yeah, every well, game is the, the Super Bowl, march right? march to perfection continues, folks. We are going to keep you updated on that one. Nice. And, and we will have uh, cut-ins late into the season with the Miami Dolphins, the 1972 Miami Dolphins. Yep. As they want, they, they want to know if there can be another undefeated team. Yes. Wow. Yeah. This is gonna be. They're gonna great. pop if they if you lose, Phil. They'll pop champagne and they'll drink it to celebrate the fact that they remain the only undefeated. Oh, team. I don't want my little digital characters to be popping champagne. Goo. Well, no, no, no. The the real ones. Yeah, the, I'm confused yeah. about this bit. Okay. It's the cold medicine. The, yeah, <laughs> probably the cold medicine. I'm the a only stuck. the only undefeated team in the history of the NFL is yeah. the 1972 Miami Dolphins. Okay. So every year when the last undefeated team loses their first game, they all get together and drink champagne to toast. Oh, so when my team, the, then yeah. lo- I got totally <laughs> lost in that. Actually a myth. Actually a myth. They don't actually get together. They don't actually do that. Well, they, they don't actually do the champagne thing either, oh, okay. I found out. Well, it was really disappointing to hear. <laughs> it's one of those email forwards. Joel's getting sick. Oh, no, I'm not. not. That was Phil right. sneezed. That was Tech Mobile Update Watch Update. Tech Mobile Update Watch Update. Brought to you by Febreze. Feel the taste on your fingers. Progressively weirder. Yeah. Progressively weirder. S- keeps getting weirder. I'm going to talk to that Febreze guy. Kobe Bryant shows Mark Cuban he's better at basketball than Mark Cuban is at saying things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that makes sense. I would buy that. I've never heard Mark Cuban, someone be like, you know what? You're the Mark Cuban of saying things. <laughs> People do say the Kobe Bryant expression. <laughs> yeah. Man, you're the Kobe Bryant of Nature Valley Granola Bars, Jordan. Oh, you're the Kobe Thanks, Bryant man. of rape. <laughs> oh, Phil. Well, this is, did Kobe Bryant rape a bunch of people? At the Dolby well, Theater. Oh, I'm well, sorry. I mean, yeah, I know. I, at, well, at least one. Okay. And we're not sure that he did like a particularly good job. As a basketball of player, raping? he's an exceptionally... Yeah, During a, a rapist, local radio oh. appearance the Friday before the Lakers-Mavericks game, Mark Cuban suggested the Lakers should consider using the amnesty provision in the NBA's new CBA to shed the contract of Kobe Bryant. Wait, is Kobe Bryant not an American citizen? Oh, collective bargaining agreement? Are you confused? Amnesty provision? There's in, in, 
there's an amnesty provision in bad. So in the latest <laughs> newest collective bargaining agreement, in terms of bad contracts, getting like bad. Oh, contracts. so you can just you can just dump it. I believe so. Oh, that's interesting. Kobe Bryant is scheduled to make three million dollars next season, which is roughly how much Mark Cuban pays people to be his friend. <laughs> uh, on Sunday, the Lakers beat the Mavericks 103-99. Kobe scored 38 points in 38 minutes, along with 12 rebounds and seven assists. Afterwards, Ooh. Kobe took to Twitter and said, "Amnesty that." <laughs> Whoa, that's, that's under boom. 140 characters. That yeah. was in all caps. That was in all oh, caps. I hate it when people write in all caps. No, no, just the that part. Oh, okay. Amnesty, capital A. I thought case. you meant that as in that tweet was in all caps. We've had a lot of miscommunications on this podcast thus far. Right? Yeah. Amnesty, that was the <clears throat> sequel to Amnesty, this, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Billy but, Crystal but, and Robert De Niro. And, yeah. the, and the middle one, the next one was Amnesty, these. Yeah. And then right. it was Amnesty, the Fockers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one. Kobe could have used the tweet to criticize ABC's Shark Tank, which features Mark Cuban, but didn't because he loves Shark Tank. It's Friday's number one show. Is it? People <laughs> yeah. are still watching Friday TV? Well, Losers. <laughs> God, nerd alert. There Mark, are, you know, apparently some people. Mark Cuban tweeted back, Nice to know there is at least one team and their players outside the Mavs that listen to everything I say. <laughs> oh! oh! But seriously, guys, he then went on to say, but I have to give props to at Kobe Bryant for a great tweet. Hashtag well done. Huh. Yeah. So he actually uh, showed it was magnanimous. That's a good word. Yeah. It's a good word for everything. Cuban. The Big East will be televised. (laughs) NBC matched NBC or ESPN matched NBC Sports Network's offer to retain its Big East television rights. The contract is for $130 million open over seven years. $130 million (laughs) over seven years. To broadcast their games? It's worth less per school than its current deal. And it is far less than the $1.17 billion the Big East turned down two years ago from ESPN. Whoa. <laughs> this is a lesson in negotiating. <laughs> wow. 16 schools have left the Big East since the ESPN made the offer of $1.17 billion. Now, although schools left, you're the Big East, you get $130 million. Wow. <clears throat> wow, Mr. Big East must be pissed right now. The new deal. <laughs> oh, he's got to go home to Mrs. Big East. <laughs> oh, look out. And Big East. I thought woman. I told you get new contracts. Yep, that's what Mrs. Big East <laughs> so sounds let's like. let's see, yeah, $1.17 billion That was offered two years ago. The Big East said no. Nah. $130 million is $1.04 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly six times more than the <laughs> yes. current deal. The new deal is comparable to the Mountain West Conference deal uh, that was made with the CBS Sports Network, which nobody gets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when this conference kicks in, this is who you'll be watching oh, in, yeah. the, in, the, in, the, in Conference USA. I mean the Big East. <laughs> Connecticut, Cincinnati, East Carolina, Houston, Memphis, South Florida, SMU, Temple, Tulane, and UCF. Don't get too comfortable, though, because UConn and Cincinnati are probably going to leave. <laughs> okay. Well, but, a lot of them also aren't in the East. Well, yep. you know. That, yep, you are correct. <laughs> covered on a previous podcast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And in 2015, Navy joins. Okay. That's wow. good, right? Right. Manny will be Manny, but in Taiwan. <laughs> Wait, what? If, I don't get it. If Manny Ramirez did not receive a uh, major league contract by March 7th, he will play for a team in Taiwan. My agent call. My agents called almost every team in the AL with apparent needs, a veteran to use as a designated hitter and with occasional pop, but nobody was interested in a somewhat dippy guy with a couple of steroid suspensions under his belt. <laughs> a Ramirez. dippy guy? He's a he's, somewhat he's dippy guy. Pretty he's a little dippy. bit of a dip. Yeah. Not a fun dip. Uh, Just a regular dip. Said Manny of Taiwan, my garage door remote is made there, and I love that remote. <laughs> of course, he's worried about the cultural differences in French Canada. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of uh, major league, a lot of foreign players can earn uh, twelve thousand dollars a month in Taiwan, Whoa. which Manny Ramirez knows can buy a lot of saltwater taffy. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, but even more freshwater taffy. Ooh, I've never had freshwater taffy. You know what I find most amusing about that is that uh, I bet you there's gonna be a lot of people in Taiwan watching him be as weird as he is going. Must be some sort of language barrier. <laughs> yeah. <we> don't. No. <laughs> no. We'll have to be like, no, it's not. He's that weird. He's just that weird. What do we got in the show today? Let's see. Oh, a uh, big interview today. Big get. Huge get. Enormous get. For the second time, we have Jack Nicholson on the oh, podcast. Oh, I, I missed him it. last time. Yeah. Uh, and ooh, grumble, grumble, I'm hungry. No, ooh. don't do this to me. Ooh. Don't do this to me, uh, Jordan. No, we need to send you out for 
sub sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, that's different. A burrito yeah. will not do yeah. this time. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll go for that because it's a different kind of food. There you go. Uh, we also don't we have a uh, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, best he, car driver in the world. Well, best NASCAR driver in the world. Yeah, I believe he's a five time NASCAR champion. Woo! And he just won a second Daytona 500. Uh, That's good, week. right? Yeah, very I good. Know. I don't know how to gauge things for the NASCAR people. Well, you win a race. Yeah. That's pretty good. If you're in All first, right. that's probably the best. If you get the checkered flag. Yeah, Phil. Um, well, I'm assuming we, we, we don't have a weird sport, do we? You're goddamn right we do. Oh, we do have a of weird sport. Of course we got a weird sport. We got one every week. Oh, I must I missed that. Oh, Joel. all right. Let's get started. Right. Well, I hope yeah. we have enough time for the weird sport. I didn't plan for that. We are happy to have in the podcast once again, two time Oscar winner, uh, legendary actor, Chinatown. Uh, easy Rider. Actually, my name is just Jack. No, okay. It's my not... name's not Chinatown. That's no, the I, name I... of one of the movies I started. <laughs> let's let's leave naming the movies to right. Jack Nicholson. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Jack Nicholson here on the show. Good to have you, Jack. Yeah, I'm, it's good to be back slumming it another time, coming on the Sports 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 Podcast. You know, that's... That's totally accurate for you. I'd be offended. You know, last weekend I was hanging out with Michelle Obama via satellite. Yeah, absolutely. We, were just, we were just going to say, yeah. yeah. A lot I, of big I stuff. I felt crazy. I felt like one that flew over the cuckoo's nest. I was uh, so excited. Yep, that was a movie you were in, Jack. So excited. That was a now movie I'm beginning I was to remember in. last last interview. Uh, but yeah, we were going to talk. Uh, there was the Oscars also. A uh, very emotional game at the Staples Center. Lakers home game. First home game after Jerry Buss passed against the Celtics. Uh, Kobe Bryant gave a speech. It was a really emotional moment. Uh, so yeah, we just, we were going to talk to you about, you know, all the stuff that's been happening in the world of Jack. Yeah. I was sprayed with sweat and someone nearly fell on my lap. Oh, at the Celtics game? Front row seats? No, no. It was Jennifer Lawrence when she took a tumble outside the stage. Oh, huh? that was, you made the Oscars. Yeah. Oh, okay. Spray had little sweat. sparkles on the dress. She was, she was shining. Right. Okay. Yeah. She was like the shining. It's okay. All right. That's another that movie. Was, I was well, yes, that was one of your movies. That was a good movie. Jack. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, any anything else that you wanted to tell us about? Uh, well, the, the place was full of statues. All right. Yeah. The Dolby yeah. Theater during the Oscars. Yeah. Lots no, of that was the Lakers on defense. Yeah, oh, they, they've okay. been terrible all year. They're like statues. All right. So we're we're back in the Lakers. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was I not being very clear? Well, you know, the Lakers are not doing well. They're under 500. They're in ninth place. Ninth in the West, place. In the Western Conference. They would not make the playoffs yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. not in the playoffs. Really, case. we got to get my pale friend off of crutches. That would have a big impact. Oh, Paul Gasol. Well, you know, he should be back, well, hopefully, by the end of the regular season. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about Kristen Stewart. What? Yeah, she she hasn't gone down on me in weeks, and I'm sick of you or using it as an excuse. Oh, yeah, Kristen Stewart had a very visible limp. Oh, yeah, the Oscars. She was she on crutches. Some, she had yeah. some uh, black and blue marks too. Huh? I I I I don't remember seeing. I remember seeing her limp out yeah. on her way to the stage. I remember thinking, "Well, relax, Kristen. It's just Chinatown." Right? That's a movie I was <laughs> yes, in. That, that was a line I, I said to me. I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, I line. mentioned. I mentioned. I mentioned that earlier. Actually. Yeah. Um, okay. So I mean. Well, while we're on, <laughs> what else? What else can you tell us about the about the evening? Well, it was you know? great to be there on a night that they were honoring a legend who has left us. Right. Oh, Dr. Jerry Buss. We wanted yeah. to talk to you about your relationship. No, no, I'm talking about Jack Klugman. I mean, that guy was a doctor of comedy. Oh, in the in memoriam on the Oscars. Yeah, in the right. in memoriam. We're, we're back. I feel in the like Oscars. you guys are con getting confused as to whether I'm. Yeah, speaking I think about I, the Lakers we are games. actually getting confused between whether, the Oscars and the Lakers. I feel game. like I'm being pretty clear. Is, is there anything else that you can tell us about that evening? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone was a buzz about the unscheduled appearance. Oh, you're talking about uh, when you introduced Michelle Obama and she presented the Best Picture award. No, I'm no, talking no, Oscars. no. I'm talking she about Dwight gorgeous. Howard. Dwight Howard, twenty-four points, twelve boards. Uh, hey, look who finally decided to show up for a game. Guess his shoulder must be feeling better, huh? Okay, what, what, once again, it really uh, seemed Dr. like you were going to be talking about the Oscars. Yeah, huh? you were Dr. not in Doctor Zhivago. You sure about that? I am positive that you were I'm not in sure Doctor Zhivago. I played the role of Doctor Zhivago. No, no, <laughs> no, you, no, you no? absolutely did not, Jack. I've been in a lot of movies. You have been in a lot of what movies. Was, how come? How come of all the people at the Oscars, you were the one that was like you and maybe Quentin Tarantino did not have your ties tied and you looked disheveled. Everyone else looked polished and beautiful. No, you think you Kristen Stewart looked <laughs> polished? No. <laughs> huh? no, of course not. She yeah. looked like she was coming off heroin. Yeah. But how come? How come you look so disheveled? 
Well, uh, that's get yourself because, together. Look, when you've been in the industry as long as I have, then uh, then you no longer have to care. All right. Well, you, what do you, what do look, you think about this season on the whole? If we had to ask you. Hey, you know what? I'll say this: I've never seen someone with that sort of dunking ability. Okay, obviously, in this case, we're talking Lakers. You must be yeah, talking about Meryl Kobe Streep, Bryant, Streep, right? Meryl no. Streep. She was playing a pickup game out back before the ceremony started. A pickup game out behind the Kobe Theater. There is nothing that woman can't do. My giant. <laughs> Meryl Streep can dunk. Yeah, my giant. That was a movie I was in. Really confusing. I. Yep. All right. Any, any, any final thoughts? Jack? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I just can't believe with... how he can slip into a role like that and make everyone forget about who he really is. Okay. All right. Through Jack's drug-addled mind, he's elderly. I'm pretty sure, though, you must be talking about Daniel Day-Lewis. No, the no, best no. Actor I'm talking for... about Kobe nope. Bryant. Right? He gave a speech about Jerry Buss. And he's the face of the team. People treat him like a stand-up guy. But he raped that lady. Do you remember that? I remember that. He raped her. Yep. Oh, you are. Jesus. You are right about that. Yeah. Relax, rape victim. It's just Chinatown. Okay, Jack, that oh is really disturbing. Yeah. Okay, we're worse than the Oscars. All right, yep. thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good to be You're going to need help getting home, Jack, because honestly, this, this was a little disturbing. Cocaine! Okay, so uh, Phil's not back yet. Let's get the other interview in. Jack Nicholson may be a little disappointing. That guy's in, that guy's in bad shape. Really bad shape. But now let's welcome to the studio your Daytona 500 champion, Jimmy Johnson. Yeehaw! Yeah, I'm the winner. <laughs> All right. I won. Thank you, Daytona Jimmy. Daytona 500. Great to have you. Jimmy, I mean, uh, really one of the biggest stars in sports one today. One of the biggest stars in the world, Jimmy Johnson. Yep, yep. You might have seen my sandwich chain, Jimmy Johns. <laughs> Left out the sun. <laughs> Still the same name. I do love me some Jimmy John. Yeah, everybody loves them some Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, okay. Yeehaw! Okay, then. Uh, so, Jimmy, uh, uh, we saw you had a lot of fun right after you won yeah, the Daytona you 500. Yeah, I did a Harlem Shake video after I won. Did see that. Yeah, yeah. internet meme. Maybe not the most timely thing. No, it's no, sort of people, maybe... people on the internet, they want to see one person dancing. And then a beat to drop, and then a bunch of people dancing. That's what I did to celebrate. Okay. Chugging milk and doing some Harlem Shake. <laughs> I believe the milk okay, is the, the milk Indy 500. Is, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeehaw! All right, All right, Jimmy Johnson. All right, well, yeah. Uh, so, so Jimmy, uh, this is a big win for you. I mean, you are the most decorated yeah. NASCAR racer uh, out there today. But this is your first Daytona win since I've been celebrating all week. All right. Uh, How you been celebrating? As soon as I got back, the uh, the first thing I did was I, I made love to my wife. Went home, made love to my wife. That's beautiful. And then That's... I got played off by Keyboard Cat. Remember <laughs> Keyboard Cat? <laughs> yeah. Burr, 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 burr. Jimmy Johnson <laughs> sleep with his wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's uh, it's another sort of old internet meme. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jimmy, uh, how... How does it feel to to maybe be among the talk for for the greatest NASCAR driver of all time? Uh, I can only explain it in one way, Joel Anderson. Oh, what's Whoop that? Whoop Gangnam Style, dun, 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 Jimmy Johnson, Gangnam Style, Jimmy Johnson. Whoop 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 whoop, Jimmy Johnson Style. Okay. That was nice. That was Thank great. You. you are you are plugged in, Jimmy. Oh, I I am lit up like a firecracker. <laughs> you better believe. I've been drunk for a week and a half. Who yeah. am I kidding? I've been drunk for a decade and a half. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're keeping up with the times. I'm glad you, yeah. you, you, you like internet. You go on YouTube, I'm assuming. Do you prep for a race or anything? I you like watch? YouTube okay. <laughs> I watch it. I watch it sometimes when the mood strikes. <laughs> kind of seems like you watch it a lot. Nah, not that often. Not that often. Is there anything you do before a race to get psyched for a race? Oh, when I, before a race, I like to get super relaxed. Yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah. I like to turn on some gentle music. Okay. And I like to set up, a, set up a little camera, and then make my entire body straight like some sort of plank and put it in funny positions. Huh? It's like, called planking. Oh yeah, we we know what it's called. You know about planking? Yeah, we know about, yeah, we know about Jimmy planking. Johnson plank. Oh, by Jimmy Johnson plank. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Get uh, my relaxation by making my whole body real stiff. That is spectacular. Uh, anything you have to say about how the how the car was driving on Sunday? This was the first time NASCAR introduced the new Gen 6 model. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to tell you, man, those tires, they grip the road. 
Yeah. They're just gripping the road. It's like peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Go peanut butter jelly and a peanut butter jelly and a baseball bat. Jimmy Johnson, gripping the road. That was a bit of a stretch, if you ask yeah. me, Jimmy. Hey, hey, peanut butter is sticky. <laughs> Sticky oh, like okay. my car tires. You know, I know you did the Harlem Shake video, but this was also the day after there was a, a horrible crash in the same track in the Nationwide series, and over two oh, dozen absolutely. fans were Whoa, injured. Oh, hold on. Are you razzing me? No, I'm just saying. Do you no. think Harlem- leave, leave Jimmy Johnson alone. Leave Jimmy Johnson alone. <laughs> you don't understand Jimmy Johnson. I wonder if maybe you could. I'm a, f- wait, no, that's a another- feminine kid under that's a blanket. That- that's that whole Britney Spears thing. You remember that? Leave yeah. Jimmy Johnson alone. I just wonder alone. if that was the most appropriate way to celebrate with the Harlem Shake. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess there could have been other ways. To the celebrate. crowd, I, the crowd was sprayed with debris during a, an accident. It yeah, was pretty day bad. Before, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a really sad time. It was really sad, and I was there. So the only thing I could think to say was, I went Leroy Jenkins. I started running around. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't Leroy get that. Jenkins. I I must have. The World of Warcraft meme, Joel. Stay up. Oh, okay. Stay up. Yeah, that's. Stay uh, on top of it, Joel. Don't fall behind now, boy. I'm just as a lifetime racer. I can tell you, if you fall behind now, I ain't let you pass again. (laughs) Huh? This is a lot of internet memes. That's all we're saying, Jimmy Johnson. Was we really a, thought we were going to talk some NASCAR today. Was, uh, well, you know, I'm I'm in. Uh, 2006. How did you celebrate? The last okay. time you I remember in 2006. Daytona 500. How'd yeah, you do? Yeah. Oh, it was good time. So I got on I got on top of my car, right, and right. I was cheering, and a little baby was dancing next to me, it was just taking his fingers up in the air, right, a little co- cartoon baby, and we were going <laughs> hamster dance. <laughs> You've combined the dancing baby with hamster dancing. Yeah, right? why not, right? Dancing, Dancers are dancing, dancing babies baby are was, dancing. They should both be dancing the same song. Dancing baby was Ally McBeal, right? I was online, too. <laughs> it was online first, I believe. It was online first. Ally McBeal done ripped How it off. How is that possible? I thought Ally McBeal like, almost predated Don't the you dare try to top me in Ally McBeal trivia. <laughs> no. No, Ali McBeal did not predate the internet. I wasn't looking stuff up in the internet. <laughs> Ally McBeal time. predated the internet. <laughs> <laughs> whoop 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 Ali McBeal time <laughs> all right I think I think I think we're good yeah, yeah I think I'm that's glad it. I could share my experience with y'all <laughs> yeah we're maybe not so glad thanks yeah, Jimmy no, we haul yeah For you, the listeners of Sports 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 Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I personally recommend a wonderful book called The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Joel saw the movie. He said that it was okay. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork for your free audiobook. And now it's time for another Weird Sports! Weird Sports. Didn't have the same enthusiasm. I know, right? I think the cold medication's finally kicking in. All right. My nose feels stuffy. This week's Weird Sport, Conde Combat. What? Conde Combat? Conde Combat. So it sounds like some sort of fighting thing. Pretty With self-explanatory. Anacondas? Oh, oh. It would seem that way, wouldn't it? But you would be wrong. Uh, Con de combat is a French martial art. As a weapon, people use a cane or con. This doesn't sound right. Well, well French martial yeah, art. Yeah, French sounds- martial art is usually like, oh, I surrender. <laughs> No, no. Like I don't, I don't know so how they like, like jumbo shrimp or yeah. military intelligence. Yeah, exactly. It's or like oxymoron. smoking and saying quips, like <laughs> stupid American. Yeah, see, they quip, but they don't fight. Um, there's a whole. There's a whole. I guess this really is a weird sport, Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> I could have sworn I've seen a mime fight somebody before. Oh, okay. I well, think it must have been a French Canadian mime. Oh, it might have been, yeah. The French Canadians, unlike their French counterparts, are extremely aggressive and violent. Right. Uh, Con de Combat was standardized in the 1970s for a sporting competition by Maurice Sari. Oh, Maurice Sari. <laughs> uh, the, con, <laughs> the con is very light, made of chestnut wood, and is slightly tapered. Oh, chestnut wood's a very light wood. Yeah. I know my woods. You know about wood. light wood. <laughs> It's the only kind Joel can get. Light, 
Wood. Right, that's the cold medicine. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> a padded suit and fencing mask are worn for protection. Oh, lame. I know, yeah. right? That's lame. where it Let's starts keep in mind French. this is a French martial art. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh. C'est vrai. Well, the con de combat, or con de armée, uh, is a product of French history and culture. It was developed in the early 19th century as a self defense discipline and was particularly used by upper-class bourgeois gentlemen in big, unsafe cities such as Paris. So what I'm getting out of this is this was the French version of, uh, like, hobo fighting, where, like, kind rich of, kids yeah. go downtown and, like, fuck up drunk winos. Yeah, they'd get, their, they'd get out their <laughs> chestnut sticks and they'd beat the hell out of each other. I feel threatened! I am drunk off wine! <laughs> and no, I'm this is, more, this is more your, like, top hat-wearing tuxedo... Walking back from the opera and and a, you know, uh, a s- unsavory character asked for like a franc. Yeah, like oh, something. give me your francs, and you would go oh no, and you'd take out your cane and you'd you'd fend him off. Give him, you'd give him a little bop on the head. Yeah, he'd go oh, I surrender. <laughs> yeah, there's exactly. a surrender. Uh, the history of the discipline is closely linked to the development of the savat boxing techniques. Uh, as a way of fighting from certain distance, as well as close combat kickboxing. The cane was in the hands of the city men, while the staff was in the hands of farm men. <laughs> there's okay. A, there's a farmer version of this? Yeah, with staffs instead of canes. Staffs and canes seem like the same thing to me. Very similar. Yeah. yeah. I don't see the difference. Uh, staffs the, the, longer. The, uh, the cane and staff were closely associated in many countries and cultures. And that's what we just said. In the olden days, the techniques of savat and can de arme uh, increased in popularity up to a point where they were used by military and police forces. Whoa. To great success. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was until World War I. Oh. And then people were like, I have a gun. And then that kind of ended that, right? I boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. Now I shoot you in the face. Uh, we're going to stop doing that accent eventually. <laughs> That's now, like 90% of the I don't work. know that we are. Uh, the millions of French that lost their lives during the war caused the discipline to nearly disappear. So Wait, yeah. the, because everyone lost their lives, like all the practitioners of this died yeah. in all, World all War All the I? violent types went off to war in World War One, and hmm. the technique of... <laughs> and apparently tried to assault that. German trenches with chestnut canes. Yeah. How did that not work? Surprising. <laughs> Surprising. Go figure. Yeah. Condemé, <laughs> not meant for trench warfare. Uh, there is, uh, is reputed to be a group who operated during the Nazi occupation who used cane techniques to carry out assassinations. Whoa! Yeah. That's actually pretty badass. It seems like not the most efficient way to kill somebody, though. <laughs> no, maybe the most rewarding way to kill a Nazi, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give him a little bop on the head. Yeah, I don't think it's just a bop. I give you a bop on the head until you die. I'm picturing a Nazi, like, addressing a... a sc- town square full of people and someone rushing up and it's got to take like five ten yeah. minutes to actually beat someone to oh. death. this would be an easy occupation all they have is canes <laughs> i give you a bop on the head <laughs> bop. oh my head <laughs> uh, i got my two confused there you go uh hey um so i'm hearing a lot of history of it how how is it a sport uh, well, How is it competitive go. today? Uh, the rules, this the modern more like sporting of weird warfare. Yeah. No, no, here we go. Uh, the modern sporting can de combat system bound in France, bouts are held inside a ring. Uh, the cane is held with one hand, but the player can change it from hand to hand during the bout. Strokes are made either horizontally or downward. Thrusting or stabbing blows are prohibited. So you can't gut somebody with it. <laughs> can't poke them. Which is probably good. Yeah. Probably. Um, they score, uh, the scoring zones are the calves, the torso, and the head. Wait. So it's kind of like <laughs> saber fencing. The calves, torso, Yeah, but then head. you can get people in the arms and saber fencing. Can you hit fencing. them in the knee? Like, because that would really hurt. No, nope. to the knee? Nope. No. Calves. Yeah. Didn't say knees. Calves. Oh, I calves. thought, I thought that we were describing a, a strike zone. Like, from the calves to the, no? No, no. Oh. It sounds like there was like Just specifically the calves. Torso calves. And calves. And yeah. Because if you were in an actual cane fight, Jordan, you couldn't hit someone in the knee. Calves, sure. Knee? What? What are you crazy? A cane fight? I'd bring a gun. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't bring a gun to a cane fight. That's, no, that's, that's exactly what that's you do. Saying, right? No. All right. Well, uh, the bout is one based on points, the lightness of the cane, and protective clothing, making a knockout impossible. I would like to test that. <laughs> they say that a knockout is impossible. 
I don't buy it. No, no, no. They say it's impossible. Impossible. I'm picturing one Frenchman sitting there while <laughs> Bill wails away with him with a cane. <laughs> you still awake? It, oui. is, a, it is a light wood. Uh, just not. Here's where it's going to get really French. Points are scored for style according what? to the correctness of body positions during fighting. That's lame. Yep. That's, yep. So That's, points are awarded on posture, mostly. Yeah. You stood up very nicely. <laughs> How gracefully you thwacked your cane against his calf. I give you <laughs> un point or twa points. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the weapons, there's either the staff or the cane, right? We talked about right. those. Right, yes, we, I, yep. <laughs> wait, <laughs> see, the wait, staff. We, we covered all the different types of weapons? Or the cane. We Did we mention staff? We let's, did. Let's wait, did we mention cane? Yes. And we're sure we mentioned staff. Well, did we mention baton? What? Yeah. That's like uh, shorter than a cane. Baton means a long stick technique and is based on the movements of medieval longsword and longer countryside walking sticks. Wait, so, so it's like a big long, big long cane. Yeah, but a big long cane is a staff. Next, yeah. <laughs> next. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go through techniques. There is uh, attacks. The attacks of the brise, the croix tête, the lateral <laughs> croissant, the lateral accenture, the envieve, <laughs> and the croissant bas. I believe the croix de tête is the bop on the head. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the stances are the avant, the amier, the exterior, <laughs> the balance stance, and the <laughs> grenouille. That's the more Anglo, yeah. Anglo yeah. Uh, way to and fight. balance staffs. Balance staff. But yeah, it's still going on. Still happening today. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions from the audience? None. All right. Well, that lost steam quickly. <laughs> oh, we. Oui. I guess that brings it to an end of another weird sports. <laughs> Citizens of Podcast Town. This brings us to the close of another sports, sports, sports podcast. Before we go, Phil would like to give you our contact information. You can email us at sports, sports, sports podcast at gmail.com. That's sports, sports, sports podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at sports, the number three podcast. That's at sports, the number three podcast. You can find us on Facebook by searching sports, sports, sports podcast, your little top bar thingy. You can find us on Stitcher radio, download the Stitcher app today at stitcher.com and search sports, sports, sports podcast. You can find us on YouTube by going youtube.com slash comedy pod net. That's youtube.com slash comedy pod net. Uh, you can find us on iTunes by searching sports, the number three space podcast. That sports, the number three space podcast. While you're there, why not rate, review, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Or you can find all of our back episodes at comedy podcast network.com. Oh, hang on. I'm getting, I'm getting a text guys. Yeah. Oh, it's from my roommate. Okay. It's oh God damn it. Those those goddamn kids ate my pie. Oh, really? that's freaking guys. I told you we needed to get out soon because now I spent a lot of time on that pie. Fuck. Lights off. You have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit ComedyPodcastNetwork.com.